Hi, good evening. Um, good evening, folks. If you join this webinar, thank you very much for coming along. Um, we are just going to wait because it's literally just clicked over to um, to six o'clock. So we are just going to wait a couple of minutes so I can see that the people are already joining, but uh, more are joining as we speak. So we're just going to wait till perhaps two minutes past and then we'll make a start. Thank you to those that have just joined. We're we're going to wait for a, um, another minute or so and let uh, a few more people still join in, um, and then we'll um, start at about two minutes past. Thanks if you've just joined. If you're watching this online, do flick forward. We're going to be starting very shortly. OK, we have a few more joined and we're, we're at two minutes past six, so we will we will make a start. Uh, good evening, uh, everybody. My name is um, Richard Eason and I'm the uh, Journeys and Places uh, Programme Director. And this evening we're going to be talking about the Enfield Town to Broxbourne walking and cycling routes. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please. So here is uh, the outline of the things that we're going to be um, talking about uh, today. Um, so we're going to go through, uh, this is part of the welcome, we're just going to do some very basic uh, housekeeping um, elements and then we'll give you a short uh, background to the Journeys and Places uh, programme. Um, I'll then hand over to, to my colleague Sarah who will introduce herself when, when she comes on, uh, who will talk about an overview of the project and talk through the different points that you can see there on the screen, um, four through till seven. And then my other colleague um, Liz uh, will then um, talk about the communications and engagement. And then I think it's back to Sarah for, for next steps. Um, and then uh, we'll take any questions. Um, so that leads me into housekeeping. So in terms of questions, you should be able to see a question and answer uh, function um, within the webinar. So do do put your, your questions and, and any uh, comments that you've got uh, into there <clears throat> and um, we'll we'll look to address as many of those as we can um, in the Q&A session um, at the end. I would ask that if you've got general comments or observations, then then that's really interesting to hear. So, you know, post those in, but try and keep your questions separate. And if you've got multiple questions, I'm sure many of you have, um, then um, putting them in as individual questions just helps helps the team uh, sort of manage that process and make sure we can pick out, um, you know, what those key, uh, key questions are. Um, this uh, is being recorded, obviously, um, well, not obviously, but it, but it is, uh, and it will get uploaded um, to our project page. So, um, as an attendee, uh, you won't be you won't be seen, so you you won't be visible on that recording. Uh, but it will just allow other people who've not been able to join this evening um, to to view uh, the content. So, hopefully, um, that is all clear, and I don't think I think I've covered most of the key points. Uh, um, <coughs> excuse me. So if we go on just to talk a little bit first about the programme in general um, before we start to look at the specifics of this particular project. So the Journeys and Places uh, programme um, is a new name. So the, that's the, the name uh, where the, the programme has evolved from we were called the Healthy Streets team. Um, and as our projects have continued to broaden, um, we feel that this new name better reflects the work that we're doing. And these really, as you can see on this slide, um, are the reasons uh, why we're here and the, why we're bringing forward a whole range of projects um, to try and address some of these issues. The climate emergency is obviously pertinent to, you know, to us all um, and enabling more sustainable travel is, is a key sort of um, way that we can uh, contribute towards um, dealing with that emergency. Um, through um, less motor vehicle trips and more active travel, we can improve our air quality and building in that, that physical exercise into our daily lives um, is good for our health and well-being and helps relieve the pressures uh, on the NHS. And um, 
you know, social sustainable travel uh, is accessible uh, to many people. There's a social equity aspect to the work that we do. Um, and even if we didn't have all the health benefits and the climate emergency uh, challenges to face, um, if we didn't do anything, we potentially continue to see um, uh, increases in the number of motor miles traveled uh, on our roads. Uh, a billion miles, I think, billion motor miles were traveled um, last year, and that will lead to ever increasing levels of congestion uh, and people just not being able to, to, to get around. By doing the type of interventions that as a programme we're exploring, we feel that we can make safer streets and roads um, for everyone, however they travel. So there's really different aspects uh, to the programme, uh, I suppose into these four areas, if you like. Uh, the first one is, is to deliver a coherent and connected walking and cycling network. Um, and that's where this particular project that we're talking about tonight uh, fits in. And you'll learn a little bit more about that shortly. Um, other aspects of the programme are, are around looking at um, town centres and, in, and enhancing the public realm. We've got a big project that we're currently taking forward in Enfield Town. Um, and then we have a, a, a series of different types of projects that fall into our, our sort of neighbourhood um, um, aspects of, of, of work, where things like looking at uh, reducing the traffic uh, volume and speeds in, 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 in uh, residential streets, um, also projects such as school streets and the installation of residential cycle hangers um, for cycle parking and those kind of things. And then in addition to that, um, we have a role about informing and inspiring people more about active travel and we have a whole series of services and, and events that can help people um, get going. So that's um, hopefully puts the this particular project in a little bit of uh, more context of, of the wider programme. Um, and with that, I think um, I hand over on the next slide. I think we're going to go to the um, overview and I'll hand you across to, to Sarah who will introduce herself. Thank you very much, Richard. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm Sarah Whitehouse. I'm the project manager delivering the Enfield Town to Broxbourne walking and cycling route. I'm very excited to be delivering this new piece of infrastructure that will have a significant benefits to the community. This proposed Enfield Town to Broxbourne walking and cycling route forms part of the Enfield Journeys and Places program that Richard has just referred to. The proposed route runs from Enfield Town along the local highway network until it meets the new river at the end of the Tenniswood Road. It then continues along the New River as a shared path to the M25 boundary with Broxbourne. Broxbourne Council are also working with National Highways on a related project that extends the route from the M25 boundary into Broxbourne. The total length of the project is approximately 4.7 kilometres. It consists of the construction of 1.8 kilometres of on-road cycle route. And if you can see my cursor on the screen, um, that's the section in the lower left hand box here, um, which is on carriageway improvements on local roads. Um, and it then goes into uh, the off carriageway section, um, which runs alongside the new river. And that's in the upper right hand corner, um, this box here, with my cursor. So this is a very exciting project for the borough, which will give you more options to travel to work, the shops, school and even into London Central. The project will deliver a key active travel link which will provide increased access for residents of Broxbourne and Enfield. It will contribute towards a long-term increase in the levels of active travel by expanding the borough-wide network. The route will connect schools such as St Ignatius College, Forty Hill Primary School, Worcester's Primary School, Capel Manor Primary School and Capel Manor College providing a safer way for children to get to school. It also connects to a large number of key destinations via existing and proposed cycle routes, such as Ponders End, the Enfield Playing Fields, Forty Hill Estate, and the Enfield Overground Station. There will also be a connection to the existing Cycleway 1 along the A1010, which continues all the way to Liverpool Street in central London. As well as the path itself, there are also improvements to junctions and road crossings to enable people to walk and cycle more safely. This includes new parallel pedestrian and cycle crossings on Carter Hatch Lane and Bowlesmoor Lane. As mentioned in the previous slide, 2.9 kilometres of the path is an off-road shared path running alongside the New River. This will provide a great opportunity for leisurely walks or cycle trips, opening up the New River for your enjoyment. 
there will also be opportunities to sit and relax by the new river with the installation of bench seats. The project works hand in hand with other Enfield Borough initiatives, such as the Free Cycle Skills Training Sessions and the STARS program, which provides courses within schools to teach about safety on the roads and build confidence in cycling for our young people. Now this webinar is mostly focusing on the shared path that runs adjacent to the new river, but I wanted to briefly touch on the on carriageway works that make up the other portion of this project, connecting Enfield Town Centre to the shared path. This is a low traffic neighbourhood, and so the proposed works are traffic calming and junction improvements to allow cyclists and vehicles to share the road more safely. Speed tables have been installed along St Andrews Road and Churchbury Lane. Intersection improvements are currently underway at the Parsonage Lane and Churchbury Lane intersection, and the Tenniswood Road and Willow Road Junction uh, went out for statutory consultation back in February 2022, um, and this was reconsulted on recently in November and December of this year. We're now reviewing the consultation feedback from um, that intersection, and so we thank any of you who have um, provided feedback, and that will feed into the, the final design for, for the Tenniswood Junction. Um, so now that we jump to the off carriageway section, um, which is also referred to as the sort of the new river path section. So this commences at the end of Tenniswood Road, where it joins the new river. It then continues north alongside the new river until it reaches the M25. The route is on the western side of the new river from Tenniswood Road to Carter Hatch Lane, and then crosses to the eastern side of the new river from Carter Hatch Lane to the M25. Much of the section of the new river is already open to the public, but the existing towpath is of poor quality, as you can see from the photos of the existing path shown on the slide. The section from Tenniswood Road to Carter Hatch Lane is not currently open to the public. We would like to assure you that a lot of thought and consideration has been given to the design of the path and the impact on neighbouring residents, which will be outlined further in this presentation. I'm about to show you a video with an artist impression of the proposed new path, which will enable you to see the significant improvement proposed to the quality and usability of this path. We will be sharing this on our um, project page um, and I'll just, it is an eight minute video and I'm conscious that um, we probably don't have time to show the whole thing in full. So I'm just gonna sort of um, scroll through this quite briefly. Um, and then, as I said, we'll be able to see the full uh, video on the project page. So this is at Tenniswood Road where we're joining on to the shared path. As you can see here, the path is on the, uh, as we said, on the, the western side of the new river. And it runs along until we reach Carter Hatch Lane. There's then a crossing proposed at Carter Hatch Lane, which is a, um, a parallel pedestrian and cycle crossing. We then continue along uh, the new river path, past the existing pedestrian footbridge, uh, to sorry, uh, up to Goat Lane. Um, so here we are at Goat Lane, and you can see here that there's um, some proposed build-outs to uh, to the footpath to create a bit of a shared space area. We then continue along from Goat Lane. Um, and here we are passing the uh, the existing pedestrian crossing. But we will continue on the eastern side of the new river. And it continues along through here. And again, I apologize that it will be a bit um, juddery as you view it, but it will be on the project web page. This continues and we get to the uh, a new bridge here, which I'll refer to um, in a bit more detail later in the presentation. Um, but there is a new bridge that's proposed across the Turkey Brook. The new path then continues heading north. Alongside the river. Um, and this is the, the Turkey Street Bridge here. And I'll refer later in the presentation to some of the placemaking on this Turkey Street Bridge. And we continue up towards Bowlesmore Lane. 
We then get to Bowlesmore Lane and there's a crossing, um, which is again a parallel pedestrian and cycle crossing through here. And finally, the project continues up to its northern termination point um, at the M25 boundary. And this is the existing aqueduct that runs across the M25. So hopefully that gives you just a bit of a flavour for what that new path um, is going to look like. Um, and as I said, that will be posted on the um, on the project page. So I'll now just run through briefly a few of the um, the design features. So the shared path is typically three metres wide. Um, there are some pinch points where the path had to be narrowed, um, with the narrowest point being uh, the ramp that goes from the shared path up to Bowlesmore Lane, which is 2.25 metres. However, this is still wide enough for two large electric mobility scooters to pass each other. The surface of the path is hogan, which is a basically a, a semi-permeable gravel, um, and it's specifically been chosen to fit in with the character of the area. Um, as you can see on the images, there are light columns that are proposed. Um, so these are at approximately 30 meter spacings. Now there has been some very careful consideration given to the lighting due to a range of factors, um, and this includes the impact on neighboring properties which could be causing some of you um, a bit of concern about the project, but I would like you to be rest assured um, that this has been definitely taken into consideration when choosing the lighting system. Um, so lighting columns have been selected over solar powered road markers due to the ability of the light columns to control um, the spill of the light. So there are also light shields that are proposed on the lighting columns, which avoids light spillage into adjacent properties, as well as reducing any discomfort glare. The light columns are also directed away from properties towards the new river. Um, another consideration for the lighting is the presence of bats. So this route has been identified as a bat corridor following extensive bat surveys that were undertaken from May to October this year. The lighting scheme has been designed in consultation with the ecologist to minimise the amount of light spillage on and adjacent to the river to minimise the impact on bats while also considering the safety of users. Instead of the usual lighting system in the borough, which will basically just turn on once a certain level of darkness is reached, which is what we're all generally used to, um, the system here is proposed to actually dimly light the river um, between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. unless it's motion activated. So when it is motion activated, then the 10 lights ahead of the user will all increase in brightness um, to provide your normal forward visibility. Um, but besides that, they would actually be at a very dimly lit level. Uh, between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m., the lights will be completely switched off um, unless they are motion activated. Again, if they are motion activated between that 10 p.m. and 5 a.m., then they will increase in brightness um, to provide the forward visibility. Um, an equalities impact assessment has been undertaken, which considers how the proposed project will have a positive or negative impact on each of these characteristics, and any mitigating actions are then considered for anything that's considered to have a negative impact. Um, an example for this is the consideration for the width of the path. So as mentioned in the previous slide, we've generally um, achieved a minimum of a, a three meter wide path, um, but there is one section that's 2.25. However, we'd ensured that um, to enable for um, disabled users that it is um, large enough for two large wheelchair or mobility scooters to safely pass each other. There are numerous access points along the shared path. These include the existing bridges, which cross the new river at Carter Hatch Lane, Goat Lane, Turkey Street, and Bowlesmore Lane. I will share photos of these crossings in the next slide. There are also access points from the existing greenway that runs south of the Turkey Brook, the existing pedestrian footpath near St Ignatius College, and a new access point at Worcesters Avenue. Um, here you can see the artist impression of the types of crossings proposed. Um, so these are taken from the video that was shared previously. Um, so these crossings are just on the existing bridges that currently cross the new river. Now there is a new bridge that's proposed um, over the Turkey Brook 
Um, so this is circled, the location of this is shown on the map. Um, so there's currently a two meter wide uh, bridge, but we're replacing, we're, um, we're keeping the new bridge, but we, the existing bridge, but we're providing a new bridge as well, um, which is four meters wide um, to allow separated cycle and pedestrian facilities. So this is to be built from a material that can be fabricated off site um, to reduce the amount of construction works that then need to occur right next to the Turkey Brook. Um, and it's also worth noting that the bridge has been designed so that it will not be flooded in a 100 year flood event. Um, regarding security, so there are indications along the route of antisocial behaviour, which I'm sure um, some of you might be aware of. Um, the lighting proposed along the route will help to reduce the levels of crime. Um, and also this project um, will increase the footfall along the route, which helps provide passive surveillance. This design has been discussed with a designing out crime officer um, in the Metropolitan Police. Regarding the planting strategy, there was initially a higher level of tree loss that was required to enable the project to be undertaken. Um, however, this has been interrogated to try and retain as many trees as possible. The amount of tree loss has successfully been reduced by including measures such as hand dig around the trees during construction. This now means that the total number of trees that need to be removed to enable the shared path to be constructed is 10. An additional two trees are proposed to be removed as they are considered to be unsafe due to having already fallen over or having basil decay, which will result in the tree falling over in the future. So these 10 trees and two unsafe trees are being replaced by 49 new native trees, providing a net gain of 37 trees. These native trees will provide nesting and foraging opportunities for birds and nectar for foods for insects and has the potential to provide foraging opportunities for the bat species. There are also low level shrubs, grasses and evergreen hedgerow for screening that are also proposed. And we're also providing rain gardens, uh, which are shown in this picture here on the uh, bottom right hand corner. So these are essentially planted landscaping features that stormwater uh, runoff can drain to. Uh, the rainwater essentially um, collects in the rain garden, which filters the contaminants and reduces the amount of flooding. These rain gardens we planted with a mix of grasses and wildflowers that attract pollinators and night foraging insects. We've also proposed 30 bat boxes and 30 bird boxes along the route to provide further habitat and ecological enhancement. Placemaking along the route includes providing seating areas and wayfinding to help people navigate through the borough. The crossing at Turkey Street is currently closed to traffic. It's proposed to remain closed to traffic um, in this project with the introduction of planters on one side um, and these bollards on the other side. Benches are proposed on the Turkey Street Bridge near the Greenway for the public to sit and admire the new river. There are also six short stay cycle parking spaces proposed on the bridge through the installation of three cycle stands. Now, as the shared path runs alongside the new river, um, this is actually Thames water property and requires planning permission. So the planning consent was recently submitted for the section from Tenniswood Road to Bowlesmore Lane. This area is shown in red on the presentation. If you are a directly adjacent neighbour, then you should receive a letter at the end of this week or early next week um, informing you that a consent application has been submitted and providing you with contact details to submit feedback on the proposal. The details will also be posted on our project page so that anyone else can also provide feedback on the planning consent proposal. A second planning consent submission is likely to be, to be submitted next year for the section of path from Bowlesmore Lane to the M25 junction. Each of these planning consent submissions has its own standalone benefits and is not codependent on the approval of the adjacent section. I'll now hand over to Liz to talk about the communications and engagement. 
Thanks, Sarah. Hi, everybody. My name's Liz Rhodes. I am the Journeys in Places Communications and Engagement Lead, um, and I'm going to be running through some of the communications and engagement activities that we have delivered so far for this project, as well as some that are still to come. Um, so early in 2020, we ran a community and stakeholder workshop um, when we were in the early stages of the designs for this route. Um, and from there, that, that informed some of the designs that you see today um, that also were subject um, to the statutory consultations that Sarah mentioned earlier. So those statutory consultations on, on various traffic orders, um, some have been held. We, we have currently the statutory consultation for the planning application along the new river open at the moment, as mentioned as well. Um, and so I encourage you to get involved in those opportunities um, when they come up. We have a, um, a project page on the Let's Talk Enfield website, which many of you may have seen already. Uh, so on that page, I'll go into it in a bit more detail in a moment, but um, we do post regular updates on there um, as uh, opportunities arise, for example, statutory consultations, but also other general updates on the project. We also held some community drop-in sessions late last year. Um, so that was to discuss the proposed plan with more of a focus on the on carriageway section, but we also addressed some of the questions and comments about the, the section along the new river. We held a webinar as well at that time. Um, and obviously we have today's webinar as well. This will be uploaded to the project page tomorrow. Um, there are still some further activities to come, including another statutory consultation early in the new year um, on another traffic order. So please stay um, up to date via the project page um, and we'll be posting information there as we have it. Letters will also be delivered to residents and businesses in the area. Um, so you'll be notified when that opportunity commences. Next slide, please. So like I said, we have a project page on the Let's Talk Enfield website. Uh, there's a lot of information on there about the project, including documents um, detailing some of the proposed designs, information on what sections are already under construction, uh, key dates, fre frequently asked questions, like I said, project updates. And we also host surveys here um, that are a means to contribute to those statutory consultation processes. I will hand back to Sarah um, to cover the next steps. Thank you, Liz. Um, so in terms of the the next steps for um, for the project, so we're currently um, we currently have a operating construction site at the Parsonage Lane and Churchbury Lane Junction. Um, so the construction for this is um, supposed to complete in early 2023. Um, we've got statutory consultation for the road crossings at the Carter Hatch Lane, Goat Lane, Turkey Street and Bowlesmore Lane. Um, so the statutory consultation will commence in early 2023 as well um, and residents will be notified of that one um, to be able to give an opportunity to provide uh, comment. There's decision, the decision on the planning consent application um, is expected in early spring of next year. Um, we also need to have confirmation of funding um, from our funding provider, which is also expected in spring next year. Um, the commencement of Tenniswood Road and Willow Road Junction construction um, is in spring of 2023, and the commencement for the new river path construction in the summer of next year. Um, both of those constructions are subject to the outcome of the um, future funding. And with that, that concludes the uh, the presentation. We'll now move on to the uh, question and answer section. Um, Great. I believe Richard is facilitating that. Um, Richard? Yeah, I can do that. So um, thanks very much, everybody. Thanks, guys, for the, uh, for the presentation. If we can look at the first question, I think that's come up, Sarah, is about the crossing points across the roads and the level of provision of those. Are you able to provide a little bit more detail on that? Yes, I can. Um, I'll go back to the slide that has uh, the road crossings on it. There we go, access points. Um, 
so these these are the artist impressions. Um, the the formal um, design drawings will be issued with the um, the traffic order um, that goes out for statutory consultation. Um, as I said, early next year. Um, but essentially, at the Carter Hatch Lane Junction, um, there is a formal um, pedestrian and cycle separated um, cycleway crossing. Um, at the at Goat Lane. There, there isn't a formal crossing, but um, this is a very low trafficked section um, and it is reduced to, you can't quite see on this artist impression, but there is a, um, a giveaway marking here. So it's reduced to uh, one lane across the bridge um, and there's obviously a, a build out here. So there will be a reduced distance that the pedestrians and cyclists will need to cross. Um, Turkey Street, that's already closed off to traffic. Um, and then at Bowlesmore Lane, there's proposed to be um, two crossing uh, facilities um, and this one here is a, um, a separated cycle and pedestrian parallel crossing. Um, and then there's more of an informal crossing um, proposed as well on Bowlesmore Lane. I OK, think, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Thanks very much for that. And I think um, another question that might be for you, Sarah, as well is around I think there's the the stretch that's not currently a public footway sort of to the back of Ladysmith. Uh, mm -hmm. I think there's some other properties then at the top there, Sinclair Close and things. Yes. Um, could you? I think you did touch on it, but could you just sort of provide a little bit more information on 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 the screening and things that you that you talked about? Yes, I can. Um, so yeah, on um, so on the section as you said from between Tennis Road and Carter Hatch Lane. Um, Yes, it's not currently open to the public and we're proposing to open it as part of this project. Um, so the there is um, screening planting that's proposed and that is a, a holly um, sort of hedgerow so that it's evergreen um, so that it will, um, I guess, retain the screening regardless of the season. Um, and then there is also um, tree planting that's proposed in that section as well um, to try, try and provide that screening for particularly for the um, property owners at Sinclair Close. OK, that, that's great. Um, I can just see there's a few questions coming through, which is not not strictly on the, the new river bit, but actually more on the the, the on road element there. But I don't know whether we could um, okay. cover off some of those. One is around the, the new Willow, Willow Tenniswood Road Junction. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, and the sort of you know the, the proposals that we've got there, and why they might be required, and what what's wrong with the roundabout, and you know why why are we making those changes? Is there anything that you'd like to say in, in response to that? Um, so I guess the the existing uh, junction at Tenniswood Road um, is not sort of considered favourable to to cyclists. Um, what sort of the the big open roundabout that there currently is. Um, and so we've proposed some changes which sort of will allow um, a speeds to reduce through that area. Um, it's got more sort of formal crossings for the cyclists um, on some of the arms. Sorry, I don't have a, a picture of that junction to show on here, um, but it does have um, more formal cycle crossing facilities. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm not too sure what else to elaborate on that one. No, that, that's, that's helpful. And, and the um... A sort of follow on to that along Tenniswood Lane. I think this we've we've proposed a few features a little bit further down Tenniswood Lane. Mm -hmm. um, are, you, are you able to just uh, explain those a little more? Yes. Um, so I think those ones are referring to the there's some chicanes that are proposed on Tenniswood Road. Um, so again, that is to to slow the vehicles um, going along Tenniswood Road um, so that we can have the cyclists um, on carriageway and sort of. Uh, Traveling with vehicles in a more safe manner. Oh, you're on mute, Richard. No apologies. Just looking through um, some of these other questions. Uh, we've got a question around um, the barriers or sort of bollards that we might be using at various crossings, including Turkey Street, uh, and whether we've thought about enough space for mobility scooters and things like that to, to pass through. You did mention a little bit about um, accessibility along the main paths, but has that been considered at those sort of entry and ex exit points? 
Um, that is a good point. I believe that there there is sufficient width there, but um, that is something we'll definitely take away to to double check that. Yeah, thank you for for raising that point. Okay. Again, there seems to be quite a lot of interest around the around the um, Willow Willow Road uh, junction. So there's some some questions, um, quite specific questions around around how that might work during the construction. So I mean, I can you know say that whilst whilst we're sort of implementing these schemes, we have temporary traffic management arrangements in place to help you know facilitate uh, this kind of construction. And I don't think there's any getting away from it that construction um, you know can cause some temporary uh, disruption, but it you know it is temporary, and, and and you know our view is that when we when we leave that site, then we, we should have you know brought about some some improvements for the longer term. Um, so and you know as we as and when we get into that that aspect, then I think more information will be provided to local residents who live in that area. So I'm just trying to look through for any. I'll try and sort of focus in on any of the uh, questions around this particular project. Questions around the material. Oh, sorry, you've gone on mute, Richard. Sorry, I'm not sure what's happening to my computer. Question around mat the material that's going to be used in the path, um, and you know, is that how sustainable is that? Um, so the yeah, so it's a, a semi-permeable gravel, um, so that's been chosen. Yeah, so that it's um, obviously it's not a soft landscaping feature like you'd have if it was if it was a grassed path like it currently is, um, but it does allow um, some drainage through. So it is thought to be sort of one of the the best options really for for this sort of path to try and be in keeping with the fact that it is near a, a new river and as you said, um, sustainability elements as well, having that semi permeability um, as a gravel rather than a um, tarmac sort of surface um, is thought to provide some some sustainability improvements. OK, great. Um, and is, is there any um, sort of wider public realm? And we've got the picture there of, of the Turkey Street, uh, Turkey Street Bridge. But you know, what are our thoughts on how this will overall increase sort of connect connectivity? And will this route link to uh, any other projects that we've got you know, in the area? Could you just explain? You know, we've, I think the question is around, well, how does this connect to other things? Um, have you got anything you can sort of help uh, explain that? Uh, yes, so there's um, there's a lot of other um, either current cycle networks or proposed um, active travel routes through the area. Um, so I know that there's uh, we can connect to Cycleway One um, through there's a, a new river um, a, a project that's proposed from basically connecting. Um, east west, but so it'll go from the project we've currently got here and it will connect um, across to the to the east um, to cycleway one, which will then take you all the way into um, Liverpool Street in central London, um, along with a lot of other um, cycleway projects, sort of the Enfield Town to Ponders End um, project at the so that would be at the southern end of this um, of this project. It can take you all the way to um, eventually through to um, Ponders End um, train station. Um, Petros, I don't know if you want to elaborate on any any further proposals. Um, hello, by the way, I haven't introduced myself. I'm Petros Ximarakis. I'm a project manager as well uh, within Journeys and Places. So yes, I think Sarah covered most of these. Um, it, it the, generally that the bigger I guess links are to stations so um so we've got enfield town uh, and turkey street being the main ones turkey street via the existing greenway uh, we've got links to to uh, law of schools again sarah mentioned them uh, forty hall um, there's some proposed routes that are being uh, looked at to provide further east west connections and links to cycleway one which is the major uh, north south uh, corridor uh, linking the north of Enfield all the way to Liverpool Street. Uh, we've got, um, trying to think um, if there was anything else I've missed. Um, 
I believe these are these are the first ones at least that come in mind. And of course, Broxbourne being the main one, um, as again Sarah mentioned earlier, Broxbourne are working on a route that runs continues along the New River essentially, and uh, links to a route that they had implemented previously, and uh, gets all the way to uh, Broxbourne Centre. Um, and just thinking as well, there's also um, an existing greenway that runs um, east-west essentially through sort of the centre of where this project is proposed. Um, and so this will sort of link to that existing greenway. Um, and there's also an existing um, pedestrian footpath as well near um, St Ignatius College. And so this path will um, pass right by that one, which will allow people to um, directly access um, St Ignatius College as well. OK, great. And there's sort of following on from that uh, in terms of access to the college, I think there's some some comment that, they, that people like the look of the past and think it would be, be great, but just some sort of concerns uh, around safety in the winter months. I think you talked quite a bit about lighting, um, but um, uh, yeah, is there anything that you sort of would like to reiterate around, you know, safety and, and people using it? And I, and I suppose I would say before you had, that, that, you know, when we're creating some of these routes, some, you know, sometimes some of these routes are, um, you know, really good for, for large parts of the year and, and large parts of the day, but there are, you know, as 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 the winter months gets in and it gets dark, then then you know people may choose to use alternative options. I think we need to think carefully about the lighting so we make this feel as, as safe as possible. But I I'd, I'd suggest that not doing it because it might people might feel uncomfortable using it for some of the time um, doesn't prevent the benefits that you get from from all the other times it can be used. But yeah, Sarah, is there, is there anything that you that you you want to add there might not be around safety and and such like the yeah the, the other item would just be around the passive surveillance so, so producing having a um a path like this it'll it'll increase the um, number of people using um the new river path and so therefore you get passive surveillance just by the fact that there are more people in the area um and that therefore sort of feels more safe and you've got as I said yeah that that passive surveillance yeah great um and a question around, you know, I think we've talked a little bit about how we're engaging, um, you know, with some of the community engagement and things that we've done. There's been a question um, around, you know, whether we've been engaging with the emergency services. Um, and I think you did mention contact with the Design Out Crime Officer at the Metropolitan Police, but I, I, I guess, you know, what about the other services, particularly, you know, regards to these crossing points and things? Have we, you know, can you explain a little bit about whether we've discussed it with us? Yeah, so the um, the Journeys in Places program, we we have regular um, catch ups as a program with all of the um, the emergency services, and um, we run through the projects with them. Um, and then if people have, if any of the, um, in, for example, ambulance um, potentially often have some um, other concerns that they'd like to discuss with the routes, um, and so then we we sort of discuss those um, in more detail with them. We also share um, the drawings with the um, emergency services as well. Um, so we have shared them and um, received some comment back, um, but it, it was mostly for this project around um, the designing out crime officer um, was sort of the, the most interested party in it. And so we we have had um, a lot of discussions with them in particular around the lighting proposal that we've come to, which um, they said has been successfully implemented on um, a number of car parks. Um, the same sort of strategy of having the lights off unless they're um, activated. Um, and see that that's been a, a a real success in car parks and things that would be similar here as well. Okay, that's that's great. Um, okay, well, um, we have had another a question just in. I think some of the we've I think we've addressed most of the questions. Um, we have got one about exactly where the path will run along the new river, and I think that that's going to be difficult. We've got I think we showed a map at the beginning of the webinar, uh, and I think there's more detail of that on on the project page. So I suppose I'd um, yeah I'd, um, as we sort of wrap up, I'd just encourage people to continue to use uh, the project page, um, you know, as a resource, um, you know, for further information. I think that this, you know, there are, um, you know, with the project such as this, there are always going to be, um, you know, some challenges uh, and some issues to work through. But this really has um, a lot of value and a lot of opportunity. I think about unlocking um, and making this sort of green amenity much more accessible to more members of the population and 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 the community and people arriving even you know from other parts of London to Enfield Town Station and then being able to you know access 
um, some of this green space and the sort of magnificent assets that we've got at Forty Hall and Cable Manor and some of those other areas that have already been um, been outlined by by Sarah. But um, as we move forward with uh, with um, you know the, the, the planning and 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 the various other events, then you know we'd welcome your um, your continued engagement. I don't think I can see um, uh, any other questions. I think we've talked about um, greening and screening. I think we've talked about security. Um, so I think what we'll probably do um, about, I think we've just got some more comments coming in, but um, I think we'll probably, um, um, oh, there's a question I think about uh, CCTV, which I think is something that we 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 are considering maybe at certain entry points. Is that right, Sarah? I think that's something that we 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 don't have about. any CCTV proposed at the moment, but yeah, it is something that we're sort of um, that we are considering. Yeah, yeah. Um, OK, so um, if I could just um, thank everybody for everybody who has, has joined uh, the webinar. I hope that's been uh, informative um, at least. Um, thank you to colleagues um, Liz, um, Sarah in particular and Petros for, for presenting that. This recording will be uploaded to the project page, um, so you'll be able to sort of look back on certain aspects there. And if you've just listened to this recording uh, for the first time because you couldn't attend the event, then then I hope that's been useful as well. Um, and on that, I will um, wish you um, a, a safe evening and also um, a Merry Christmas. Um, um, yep, yeah, all the best. We'll close the webinar there, please. <laughs>